Like the Z900RS, Kawasaki have really nailed the Z650 rupees. Its styling is spot on and the parallel twin motor feels right at home in retro guise whereas a modern naked it is a bit lackluster and behind the game when compared to its rivals. Fun to ride, soulful and with a responsive chassis that certainly doesn't feel old school. There is little not to like, in RS guise it feels as if the Z650 has finally found its identity in life. Things get interesting with the new Z650 rupees we have here because the median age of Z650 owners is 34. However with the Z650 RS and its classic styling, Kawasaki sees the bike as an appealing one for potential Z900 RS riders who don't want or need the power and want to step down. On the other hand, the baby RS matters because millennials now make up the largest population of current or potential motorcycle riders, many of whom see and appreciate the appeal of classic styling over the aggressive Sugomi design. Little has changed when it comes to the RS's chassis compared to the Z650 and this only works in the RS's favor. There has never been anything wrong with the Z's handling and in its retro clothes the fact it has conventional forks works rather than detracts from its curb appeal. Pleasingly light and agile. The RS delivers a thoroughly competent and enjoyable ride quality that is sporty enough for more experienced riders yet not intimidating or flighty for those newer to two wheels. Oddly the seat height on the RS is 30mm taller than the Z at 820mm but most of this is squish in the deeply padded seat so it doesn't feel too much of a stretch to the ground. If it is Kawasaki offer the option of a 20mm lower seat for 286 pounds and 95 pence. The cast spoke wheels are purely a cosmetic feature and bring no weight benefits and the same is true of the round discs, which replace the Z650's pedal items and make no discernible difference to the stopping power. The Bosch abs is okay for road riding but not the most advanced on the market and compared to newer systems it feels a bit rudimentary. That said it is pleasing to see both the clutch and brake lever are span adjustable. The Parallel Twin is a tried and tested unit and holds no surprises. Exactly the same in terms of its tune and gearing as used on the Naked Z650 and also able to be restricted to A2 legal if required. In full power guise it is perfectly suited to life as a modern retro whereas a sporty naked it struggles. Against the likes of the Yamaha MT-07 the Z650's bigger bore engine is a bit slow revving, lumpy and disappointing in its performance. However these very traits only enhance the feel of the RS. On a retro you want a bit of soul and the fact the twin feels more mechanical and less worry gives the RS a lovely bit of old school charm. The gearbox is a touch clunky, but the fuel injection is perfect, the clutch light and the mid-range drive more than enough for brisk road riding, it's a fun engaging and easy going motor, which is bang on for a modern retro. The RS is effectively a Z650 that has been given a retro makeover, which is no bad thing because the Sugomi-styled Z has been around since 2017 and despite selling in large numbers has very few reported major issues. The parallel twin engine which can trace its roots back to the 2005 R6N, is very robust and hasn't changed dramatically over the years aside from tweaks to ensure it meets new emissions regulations, so all should be well there. Owners do complain the paint finish on the engine can leave a bit to be desired and there are a few grumbles about the switchgear packing up on older Zeds but in general this is a very solidly built and reliable bike. Looking around the RS there are lots of lovely touches such as the spoke style wheels and retro clocks, which give it a real feel of quality considering its budget price tag. Unlike the Z models, there is no performance edition of the RS and also no cafe racer as you used to get with its bigger brother, the Z900 RS this has been discontinued for 2022 in the UK. 
so your only options are colors with gray and green costing a 150 pounds premium over black. The bike itself comes with abs as standard but no other rider assists, not that it really needs them. The lack of radial brakes and inverted forks is also far less of a styling issue on the retro than the modern Naked Z, so they aren't missed either. The dual dial dash lacks connectivity the Z's TFT dash has this feature but it is pleasingly retro and has a fuel gauge. In terms of official accessories, Kawasaki sell a good range of add-ons that includes a chrome pillion grab bar, side grips and a radiator protector and there is also a range of crash protection and even a full road legal titanium acropovic exhaust system. One of the best add-ons is a set of Kawasaki retro-style 1970s font tank emblems. Although they are £84.95 oddly, you have to pay £29.95 extra for a helmet lock kit. Although it is a one-key system, 